Hello, Deluge community. Phoenix Song here doing another feature on FM for Deluge. This time, as requested, doing a how-to on some famous FM-type tones and how to build them from scratch. I'm pretty excited about this and highly caffeinated and like to thank the community for some of these ideas. Please, if you could, like this video and subscribe to this channel. It will really help so that I can keep providing these tutorials and free downloads of Deluge sound designs. The last video I did about Deluge FM was like giving you a fish and in this video I'm teaching you how to fish so if you get some value out of this please hit that subscribe button there will be a big range of interesting and valuable knowledge sent your way and it costs you nothing to do that here are some of the target goals brought up by the community bells gongs and gamelin house bass organ wobbly bass the lately bass and electric pianos we won't get to all of that in this video so we keep this video short enough to be watchable but I hope to return to more of these soon. I felt these were a very reasonable request and something a lot of people would like to know about. So let's break it down. First of all, let's review the synth architecture of FM in Deluge. As you may know, Deluge does not have a six op FM engine. So we're just going to have to get creative on some of these and not do it in that standard DX way. Here's the diagrams that come straight out of the Deluge uh, official manual. Two carriers and two modulators, two envelopes and two LFOs that you can use creatively. In a typical FM with a four op or six op, every operator that would be a carrier or a modulator has its own envelope and that's what makes it an operator instead of just an oscillator. And there's some other things to that too, but let's keep it like that simple. There is um, some really cool things going on with the way the Deluge FM engine works. It's showing a lot of different algorithms that the Deluge has. The Deluge only has about two different algorithms because um, these are all just um, not using some of the um, carriers and modulators. And so this one right here and then this one right here are, are basically the only algorithms that you have. But there's so much you can do with them, so I'm not trying to dog on it. It's just, it is um, a powerful tool, and you can definitely get a lot of tones out of it. So why is that? Well, you can see each of the carriers or modulators has this little loop here, and that means it has feedback going on. So um, say on the DX7, you'd only have one of the operators would have a feedback loop on any of the operators. But Deluge, all four of them have that. And so as you, I'll be able to show you in a little bit here, that means each of them can be mutated from a sine wave into basically a saw wave. And I'll try to show you that. And that's why I brought in this oscilloscope type program here. Right now it's checking out my voice. Um, but we will be able to go through that and show you what um, it does to one of these um, carriers if you start applying uh, feedback. Just want to help you visualize that because it's really important to see how it shapes the each tone. We've got um, two carriers that you can hear and two modulators that you can't hear but affect the carriers. And so some neat things that Deluge does is um, you only have two envelopes, that's okay, but you get two LFOs. That's something you didn't always have in um, typical FM engines. So these can be applied in different ways to all of these at the same time and in different ways. So you've got a lot of options. And one cool thing I've done in some of them is used LFO and random on the amount of feedback on each of these over here. It sounds really cool. Um, it's not your typical uh, FM type tones. You get some new tones. So kind of like the digitone. Some You can explore some different tones that you could there. And often some that you couldn't do on the digitone. Also wanted to talk about this here, the FM ratios. So if you're used to ratios that you see over here, 
deluge works more in semitones. And so a one to two ratio is like an octave, a one to four is two octaves, and a one to eight is three octaves. And then oh, the math gets a lot harder to do on those not so even ones, but I really like how the deluge does that because you can have a lot of control um, some types of ratios uh, on the DX7, you could do these as the basic one and then fine tune them to get some of these other more fine tuned ones that you definitely need. But you have a lot of control and it's in terms with semitones that you might be more familiar with if you were working with uh, virtual analog synths. I've got this Excel spreadsheet set up that can give you uh, conversions of any one, any ratios to semitones and vice versa. But actually, I found uh, when I was exploring these different goals for making FM tones that are classic, often you don't need that many to, to get that tone. We're going to talk about how to make bell tones, gongs, and other type of uh, tones like that today. And I'll show you how using only um, a carrier and a modulator that you can make bell tones without having tons and tons of operators anyway. So it's good to learn about that. And you can also apply that to virtual analog programming or analog. So I've always sound designed by ear, but um, use it doing that, you have to use trial and error to get to the goal and using principles that you've learned over time. But today I wanted to do something a little different. And as you see here, this, um, iPad here has an oscilloscope app running. I'm going to put some links in the description on how you could download this phone for free. It's a really cool program. What it does for this process is you can see some visual meaning to some of the results of what you're doing and uh, wanted to show you some things because they're pretty exciting when you're looking at FM. It helps to explain what's going on so you can see what's going on rather than just hearing it because uh, you hear a bell tone, you're not sure what's going on. Well, with this oscilloscope, you're gonna see what's happening. Also, there are some good things about the, how the waveform changes over time so you can see that on the oscilloscope. Two patches I made as bell tones to show you what we're working towards today. So here's one of them. And down lower so you can see the waveform. Isn't that cool? So you can see what's happening with the FM and the envelopes. It starts as a more harmonically rich wave and then mellows down into a basic sine wave. So you can see the wiggles within the wave, and that's the FM, because we, we're working with sine waves here mainly. And so it starts out really with harmonics and mellows into a standard wave. Sorry, my voice is coming in here too on the oscilloscope. Yeah, higher up, you're not going to see it but on the mid notes to the low notes, you can really see how the FM is working here. Wow, that's awesome. And here's another bell tone we're gonna to be working towards today. The classic tubular bell sound. Top Gun. This is found on some of the original uh, factory presets from Deluge, but I started from scratch and uh, use some reference points to do it because I like the preset, but I wanted to it start over from scratch so I could explain it. But also I think I've come up with a slightly better tone here that sounds more like the original uh, tubular bell sound that we've all grown to love. You can see something going on there on the waveform. That's a little different than the other one. We'll go into that later. Let's talk about how to build FM tones from scratch. You first change the synth mode to a FM, right? So it's just a sine wave. We'll get back to this later, but I wanted to show you what happens when you change the feedback up.
so it's kind of a lot more like a saw wave. Not exactly, but... You can see it there a little bit more. Wow. Kind of like a digital saw wave, but with a lot more interesting stuff going on. Shaped sign. And then like like a noisy saw. It's see a lot of interesting things going on there. We'll get back to how that will be useful later for various things. Okay, so we start with a sine wave, it's a good starting point for a bell tone, and then we start building on that. So as we saw before, there's a lot of harmonics at the beginning, and then it mellows into a standard uh, sine wave type tone. So let's uh, look at this a little bit. Part of that is obviously an envelope is used to uh, create the attack of more harmonics, and then it mellows down as it goes. So we're going to start with that, and then we're gonna bring in a little volume. We don't even need that much, it's just for example. So about five. Okay, and there's this clicky noise at the beginning. So often on envelope one here, I roll a little bit off of the initial attack. And that takes care of the too much, that click at the beginning from a sine wave something. Okay, so now we're going to take envelope two and start sculpting it. Uh, we don't want, it always starts with, okay, so zero attack, and then um, let's say about 16 decay, and I'll match the, the uh, release, and then no sustain. So that will create that, and you might not hear, yeah, we don't hear anything yet. So what we want to do is we go to uh, FM mod one, and we click the button, say envelope one, no, envelope two, yes. Okay, and then we give it a little bit. Cool, all right, and we're not hearing that yet. Let's see, um, okay, we wanna turn it all the way up to 50. You can hear something going on. Hear that? So we got that. Okay, what the problem is, is we don't have any transpose going on on this uh, modulator. We need something other than just zero, which is gonna be the same. See, we have zero on this and zero on that, so that's not gonna do much. So let's, ooh, yeah, so we're starting to have something happen. Let's say, okay. Okay, so this is an octave. Hey, it's kinda like an EP. We can use that later. All right, but we want a bell tone right now, so that's what we're going towards, so. Ooh, that's nice. So that could work. 27. Depends on what type of bell you want. But uh, so sometimes these odd numbers work out well. One thing I found was uh, 57. Lots of harmonics way up top, way high. So let's see. Five, what's not working here is envelope one needs to be sculpted too. So we're going to say, hey, envelope two, you got 20s, okay. Let's put some decay, uh, release on there and sustain. This is where we're gonna get some better results, about a two, some little sustaining stuff. So kind of like it's in that synth bell type category right now. Um, not super realistic bell tones, but we're getting there.
adding a little reverb's nice to give it a natural sound without too much other things. Okay, that's a nice, very glassy, very high bell. And that number, 57, is uh, up four octaves and a sixth. There was no particular reason to that. I looked it up and it was, seemed like a pretty interesting ratio, not used in bells a lot. So pretty exciting that that one works out. But it's still pretty simple. So what we can do is uh, bring in oscillator two, which will also be affected by that because we're... Um, on oscillator two, let's bring up. Not going to do much yet, but let's transpose that up. What is 28? That is up two octaves and a major third. So that is giving it some nice, um, more happy bell tones. You could make it more dissonant and darker going down by 27. So that's a minor third, but very close. So listen around here. And nice. So what's happening is you go from a simple a uh, pleasant bell to something more like a gong, not a smashed gong, but just a lightly tapped gong. Okay, and we can play with the sustain a little bit. Let's bring it up a little bit and then we can to make more of a droney bell. Great, so we've got some nice interesting bell tones and this is not your standard FM recipe for a bell tone. I've looked up those and they are definitely not this. But we're getting creative with the Deluge FM engine here and how to make it really work. Now, going back to some of those other um, things we talked about earlier on, the feedback. So we don't want to add feedback to these carriers. It it's, gets way too nasty for this use case. Um, but on the modulator, if we take up the feedback level here, we'll get some more metallic tones. Hear that? Sweet. So we are in a really good shape here. We've got, um, uh, basis and I'll um, share this file for this as kind of a template for many different bell tones and so bringing up and down the second oscillator gives it uh, more rich harmonic uh, or inharmonic tones of a bell and then bringing up the feedback of the modulator makes it more metallic tone so there's about you know I'd say about five different bell tones you can get out of this as a foundation Okay, so that last bell tone was an original sound design of mine, and I wanted to show you another way to go about getting FM sounds on the Deluge. Say you want a classic sound, like the tubular bell sound on the Deluge. How can you get a recipe for something like that that has been done before? You could find some on the internet. Uh, some you have to buy as books. Uh, I've seen some of those. Uh, but other times you can find a few resources online about the general makeup of a uh, synth tone. Another idea is you could find them in another synth. So I use the later method, so meet my mode X. So this is a really powerful uh, FM engine. It's got eight operators and it also has a lot of those classic FM DX sounds on board with the Yamaha Heritage. So 
The difference would be, say you had a DX7, it's going to be a little hard to go through that and get all the recipes out of that. But as you can see here, uh, my Modex has a nice touch screen here and you can use it to get um, to what made up these classic sounds, show you what it is that I did to find this classic tone. So one to 3.5 ratio on two pairs of operators and, uh, and then the carriers to modulators. And then over here, you had something else and these ones weren't even used. So because it came from DX7, two of these eight operators aren't even used. Okay, we don't have that much to work with here on the Deluge to create that rich of a tone, but we do have enough, and we do have some other advantages that we that the DX7 did not. Okay, so this is the one I've already built and um, can make it from scratch again. If we want to think about uh, the ratio of 3.5, we have to use a conversion table, and I'll show you some of those. And so 3.5 converts to about 21.5 semitones. And it's hard to do the math on that because the ratio to semitone conversion is sort of a logarithmic sort of thing. I've set up an Excel spreadsheet that basically does the math for you, and I can share that so you can get a conversion from any ratio that you find in a synth uh, recipe and convert that for you. A little harsh there, but let's pull, uh, apply an envelope like we did before and we'll hopefully be in the ballpark. too much. So that's the type of thing. Oh yeah, and we don't have any envelope on the, so we take that back, about there, about that. Cool, so we're close. But remember we saw that it had two pairs of uh, close operators. So what we're gonna do to emulate that on the Deluge is use the unison. And we're really close. My uh, original preset is a little closer, had a little more time to do it, but you see, you hear that we're getting into that sound. The classic tubular bell. Not actually like a tubular bell sound, if you've se if heard one recently, but it's this uh, sort of sound that came as a synthesizer sound that people really like for the, like was used in Top Gun and a lot of other songs because it was a popular preset there. So the one I did and prepared for this, uh, I will share that file, which is a little bit more fine tuned for uh, what it is. And there's a lot of things, like you could add a little bit of feedback to the um, modulator again to get it more metallic toned. There you go. So play around with that and you can morph them between what you need. We can go a bit further and get the rest of that resonant tone thing, but I wanted to bring up a side point. Because some FM is simpler than really is needed to, 
to use all six ops to get that classic FM tone. That's why you can hear some synths like a mini Moog, Model D doing some tones that sound like bells or guitars, etc. You don't always need all those oscillators or operators from FM to make cool tones. So I'm looking forward to showing you more of these cool creative ways to make most of those great FM tones on the Deluge with some creative methods. Please like and subscribe this channel to help fuel my ability to do more helpful tutorials on sound design and more.